Yeah, there's yeah. there's one you haven't yeah. seen. Tracy's been busy. Well, good. Toilet won't stop running. Man. Go catch it. <laughs> they do anything up there to that grand view on that building? They start picking up any brick yet or anything? Yeah, on, on different occasions. Uh, I don't understand. I, I keep watching it, and and they. It, I don't see them there working. I don't know when they're doing it. I've seen a trailer sitting there, but I never seen anybody there and working. Yeah, they they picked up some bricks and knocked them all down. They, you know, bricks off the walls. So I see some kind of progress, but like I said, I don't know when they do it. Uh, I'm, I'm through there, you know, no, no, no. times a day. I, I uh, other than that, that's probably time. your direct route, isn't it? Most of the time, yeah. Unless I'm coming this way and I go straight. Yeah, yeah. Well, but when I go get fuel at Grand, you'll come through that way. Yeah. 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 Well, should we say the budget? Yes. Yeah. Things are going. Good turn. It's, are you ready, Selena? Yep. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, with that, I'll call the meeting to order. Okay, I make a motion to approve today's agenda for June 20th, 2020. I'll second that. Take a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. I'll make a motion to approve today's agenda. Or minutes. Or minutes, I'm sorry. Minutes for June 13th, 2023. I'll second that. Okay, I've got a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, let's jump down to number five and meetings attended. Okay, so last night we had a um, potential services tax meeting. You guys have read the uh, verbiage on maybe putting it on the ballot. Like I said before, I think we may streak the word ad valorem. Um, and then uh, we're gonna, I need, I need you to send that off Dorsey Whitney and have them just look it over and make sure that it's okay. I don't know why it wouldn't be because another county used it basically. Um, you probably set that up for them. The other one that was went through with I think it was Johnson County and it was really wordy hmm. it was this one was short sweet to the point that's what I wanted I want everybody to know what we're doing without making it look like we're pulling fast one or something I hate those ones that are overly wordy and then you get to the end you're like well you how do I vote that. how do I vote <laughs> so I wanted it very clear and um I think that's about as clear as it can get. The uh, Dan Connery got called out on an ambulance call, so we weren't able to see the um, final draft of the um, pamphlet. Um, Mark is going to email it to um, Mike, and Mike is going to distribute it to all the other board members to review. Uh, I will forward them to you guys so you can see it. I think Jim's already on the mailing list, so. He'll get a copy and uh, we're going to do it. We're going to tweak it offline, I guess. And then hopefully by Friday, everybody's cool and we can go get them printed early next week for the 4th of July parades. We're not going to print a whole bunch. We're going to print maybe a thousand. That way, if we decide to change it later or we get some feedback that somebody doesn't understand something, we can tweak it for, for later. Um, but that's where we're at on that one. Uh, I had a- Maybe have the county attorney review it too. Just- When her? When her. Yeah. Looks good, but- Yeah. Her sets eyes see different things. I hear that. Um, we had a board of health meeting last Tuesday. Um, Business as usual, mostly. Um, 
talked about the car. They have a car that needs to get repaired. It's out of Brandon's now. I'm kind of watching that. Um, tobacco prevention grant. They're working on that. The big talk was basically their QAPI report, which is kind of how they do everything. And we updated that. Um, and then we had some discussion back on the loan closet um, form. Adam's kind of like, listen, the person that's using the equipment needs to be the one that's signing it. And the girls are like, well, they don't always show up. It might be a family member or a friend that comes, gets that stuff. They're at home. And so we talked about mailing them the form. And in the end, it's basically somebody's going to sign for it. And they're going to be made aware that it's not permanently. It's about a 90-day thing, and you can get an extension if you like. So that was the best way around that one. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, Roxanne's doing a good job. The only other thing we had on the Board of Health that um, they were talking about their cars a little bit. I know that the county in the past had just given them like old squad cars and stuff. And their fleet is getting a little better. We're still buying used stuff, which is fine. I would like to see it get to the level where we can start actually purchasing a new one and start rotating something in. So, and basically all that would be is you guys would have to add to your to budget, budget right? to do that. They're, they're budgeting like 15 grand and they're getting used and it's working. Yeah. Um, but they're spending a, an abnormal amount of money on maintenance, yeah. which if we had a new one, we wouldn't do that. So you kind of, right. uh, there's enough in the budget. They're going out, we're finding another used one this year. And I told Roxanne, we're going to sit down the next budget season and, and add enough in there. So after a couple more years, maybe we can get a new one and start rotating some new ones in and getting away from the maintenance problem. So Makes sense. Yeah, that's basically where we're at. And that's all I had. How old has your week been? <clears throat> well, we had uh, uh, last week, uh, went down there to, uh, to the secondary roads and we got uh, Chad with DNR. He's pretty much the one that handles the permits for the state for the transfer station. And we asked for an extension. And uh, we told them all what we was doing and uh, getting the dirt moved on the other side. We got probably around 250 to 300 loads hauled in there for you guys. I don't know if you have been out there to see how much dirt, quite a bit of dirt. We're going to raise it up. Uh, I'd like to get it up two foot. We only, we're that area. It's good, but we would like to be above future problems if everything ever comes up. Um, so um, he said yes type it up. So John typed up and sent it to them. And he said that they would probably approve it. He couldn't tell us right now it's going from the committee. But so we'd have a um, extension up to January. And what that extension means that uh, uh, that we'd have to do our due diligence to make sure that we level it up. Uh, we have contractors set up come in two weeks to get the dirt all leveled up. We're going to sheet put it and get it all compacted real well. And then we're gonna put some gravel and then doing some partitions to move our metal, um, electronic recycling, um, refrigerations, uh, stuff that has uh, possibly freons in it over to that area. That's the first step and he was very happy with that. Um, we are looking at alternatives. What we can do is maybe uh, relocating our floor that way we can get completely out of the this is a long range this is not going to happen for moving or building but look at that maybe take a, the steel structure and move it over and reskin it because the steel structure is in great shape on that building and put it at a floor that it's at a higher level and that way it'll take all the clouds of the floodplain away um, but that's just stuff we're working toward the future but we have to make a just make sure that we're moving forward and keep the state happy, but they are going to extend our, our transfer permit. Um, so good news. Um, but paying them up, but we got to jump through hoops. Uh, see what else we got. Um, 
um, talked to a couple people on the complex still rough I'm trying to get together to get the um, uh, um, package put together so we can uh, get it on out there and get a bid for doing the complex steel roof and uh, and get rid of that the roof that's uh, over top of the offices public health and conservation that's uh, failing on us um, to get something that's insulated with the metal roof kind of matches the court out there and so we're kind of working on that. Um, About the propane tank. Oh, yeah, you said that. I'm sorry. They got it stopped. Stopped. Fixed. fixed with a pipe wrench and a cheater. But we need to find out. And that's where that's just where it's at. So at least it's not leaking anymore. No, yeah. but I think we've lost. Yeah, lost some it. some. Um, is there a is there a barrier or anything in front of that tank? Um, we're sure. working on it. No, it's part of the painting. Is he's we're gonna get a, a cob blaster. I, you know any cob blasters or anybody that uses something that don't spark producing that we can do. To, but Brandon's gonna use soda. Uh, you could do baking soda. Yeah, you know anybody that does oh, baking yeah. soda? No. But anyway, we're going to use um, yeah, I have soda blast. Some of our trustees from the jail yep. and some yeah. people that has um, uh, community service time to paint that, get it primed. But we need to get it sandblasted. And then Brian's working on um, barriers to put out in front of it, just like you said. There was a guy that had the uh, dustless blasting that had water yep. in it. Um, I don't know if he's still doing it or not. Been a long time since I had him out. Well, I know uh, Andy after passed away, he did it, and I don't know of anybody else on that area. But but if you do come across yeah, somebody, yeah. we are looking for somebody. So that's and then maybe sink some bollards in front of it yeah. or something to keep. And that's what Brian was looking at. It was part of the safety thing he was putting on there. But we wanted to get all repairs last year, and then we had this reoccurrence. So we wanted to try to get that and at least get it sandblasted, and then we'd get the bowers okay. put in. But yeah, you're right. It needs something. So the tightening of the fitting or the bolt or whatever it is, we're good. We're not going to do anything else. We're going to... Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I think it's something we need to probably look at. How, how big is the... Is it like a drain valve or a, is it the two inch one? He just the guy from the elevator said it was the liquid side. Just it down. Mm -hmm. See, and that's what gets us. That we just spent uh, uh, ten thousand. Wow, it was like at least six just to get the tank empty. Yeah, and then the repair and that bomb was one of them that that was questionable before. So I think we ought to get a hold, find out who did a repair, get a hold of them and come and inspect it. Why did this leak already? We spent money. How long ago has that been? Two, two, years, two, half, two years ago. Is before the 22 uh, heating season, right? Am I thinking how, how did we discover that it was leaking? Smell it? I don't smell. Presume. Yeah, Brad said smell. But also, I noticed too, and I didn't smell it. I noticed the tank dropping um, quicker right. than normal. And I'm thinking, especially in the spring, where yeah. it ain't running. Well, I even put a call in to Randy Griffin because he was part of all that work in 20 or 21. Yeah. And, you know, I think Blue Flame had them people can't come. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. just trying to think of who it was. The only way you can get away from that is have it inspected every year. I mean, it's an older tank. I mean, but we paid somebody to make it leak, stop all the leaks, because we had a few leaks, and then they failed to do that. How, so I think how we long has their work good for, though? I, mean, I would think we us get it more than a couple seasons, though, wouldn't you? I don't know. Either that or I'll start repairing tanks. From I would just I would go out look at I would guess they'd have a 12 month warranty on it, would be my guess. But I, and you'd have to go back and look. Well, there. I want to see what they worked on. If they worked on that line, they, they had to they take had it to. clear down and weld a fitting. Yeah. I want right. to find out what they did. Which yeah. fitting they welded. And yeah. if we're still fighting the same link. Yeah, then yeah. maybe we can talk to them. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. 
You think you could look it up and see mm -hmm. yeah. who yep. it was? I would think that they would write something on there about a warranty. Yeah. It's 12 months or two years or whatever. And I'd really like to, uh, Raymond's on here too, but I'd really like to see how far we're away from a natural gas line. This whole idea of, of us um, buying on um, market, whatever market price is, it's it's this kind of thing. It's sometimes it's to our favor, and then most time it's not. And then have an issue like this where we lost who knows how much out of the tank. Is it something that we look at um, updating out there? I mean, it's it's uh, that's closest. If there's one running down 61, I don't think there is. I don't know where they. Well. There's something that cuts through the timber by your sons. Is that natural gas? It goes down through there, you know, where it comes there, where the old highway is, that clearing of the trees. Is that power? That's power line. Okay. Okay. But anyway, that's some of the things that uh, uh, we had on there. The, but the roof is the biggest thing, trying to just get an idea of uh, our scope before we can get some bids on that. But uh, I think that's everything. Is that an LP tank here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, complex. Okay, is that all for you? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I last Wednesday I could have went to Fairfield to Judicial Eight, back to Mount Pleasant for Russ, and then back to Fairfield for Southeast Iowa Lake. But being Judicial Eight was basically a uh, is going to roast some hamburgers and say goodbye to the board because the board is, is no more because of the state consolidating things. So I went to Russ, nothing really new there. Uh, probably our biggest decision was to continue with ICAP insurance and look over the numbers. Then I went to Southeast Iowa Link, which we opened up the meeting with a link meeting that we closed our last meeting and joined with the central uh, behavior. And there they only needed, there was, which would have made 12 counties. They only needed six board members. They didn't want me. And so um, <laughs> they had a person getting use of the mental health a judicial uh, sheriff and then six counties. So I, I didn't make the cut. Then uh, Friday, I went to SIAC and SIAD, which SIAC does all this training for the jails. Just a lot of jails are having a lot of turnover and a lot of training. Then they have the cars to transport. They need drivers, can't, you know, the, hire, the workforce anymore. We put a, if one employee can talk one of their friends into coming on, we give them, we'd give them each a $500 bonus after six months. Just something to try. I mean, we've had job fairs and then Later on with SIAD, the juvenile detention is the same way. Just they've had three, two or three job fairs in the last six months, and no one comes to them, or the people that come to them will pass um, the background checks. And oh, what's the ruling on that? Is they have to have passenger rated driver's license? Yeah. And pass a background check, number one. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, so that's. They have to have insurance. Do they have to have proof of insurance? Well, no, they drive one of our cars. One of our cars. So, and they bought a new car, updating, because they're about averaging like one hundred fifty thousand miles and taking kids all over the state and doing. Well, there's one. Guy on the board from Washington that's drove it. He says you can't pay him enough. He says get a bunch of little, little branch. Yeah. 
So, um, yeah, I had kids, so. but they then they usually got behavior problems and it just isn't a fun job, but still getting the job done. And with juvenile detention, we could probably get more prisoners if we had more staff. So, when you say that, is it Louisa County or are you talking about the system? You say more staff. The system. Okay. Or, or cyan. Gotcha. I didn't know if he's done. No, nope, not us. System. Okay. Not us. That the little juvenile detention facility in Montrose. Montrose. Well, let's start working on our. I, I got one other thing mm -hmm. just to update you. Um, I've already updated the city of Wapalo, but the new Dollar General store is still on board. Um, they're actually out surveying today as I drove by. They're surveying the lot ends now. Um, they anticipate a September construction and 90 days completion. So in theory, by Thanksgiving-ish, it should be up and operational. So just to squash the, the rumors. local rumor that they're not doing anything, they are. It just takes some time. Yeah. And I see Columbus is getting a new uh, family dollar. Yeah, I think it's already up and it's open. up, but it's not open yet. Signage, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And that's good. Seeing our community yeah. grow. It is awesome. Okay. We got anything from the public here? Okay. Everybody shakes their head. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you want them jobs? Try to. Your general Come on. $500. Yeah. <laughs> I'll sign to you. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I don't see any payroll changes other than the ones of our own. Um, okay, number eight is discussed regarding memory lane cruisers car club using the courthouse lawn. Yeah, uh, Saturday the 15th. Yep. Um, they are going to, I guess I'm the new president of that car club again. So um, they would like to use the lawn just like they always do. Um, there's a porta potty that will be dropped off. And uh, it's not going to be a show. It'd be like last year, just kind of a cruise type thing. It's real it's laid cruise, back. Yeah. And, yeah. So um, there, I guess they're just asking. Permission to um, use the lawn again. So they mm -hmm. usually bring their own trash cans. Yeah. And they're, yeah. they're more than welcome. Okay. Like I just want to make sure it was official. Yep. <clears throat> it's good. Yeah. Okay. Welcome. Fireworks permit for Brian and Tammy Hayes. Which one's you want on? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they're kind of shady characters. Hey, what is going to happen? I mean, um, uh, Something we have to keep in mind with the dry, the weather's not cooperating. Um, I think Wednesdays it's going to become a reality. <laughs> a lot of dry they, pull, they, they post fire oh, watch them, yeah, won't they? That's what we just need to discuss because uh, it's it's uh, yeah. getting a little desperate out there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, Brian and Tammy Hayes is fire mm -hmm. working man, and it is for the date the 7 1 through 7 4 of 23. That's my motion. I'll second that. You got a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And on number 10, we need to table okay. um, that as they did not get the original contract to me. I'm going to make that motion. Or... Yeah, I'll make a motion to table the item number 10, uh, sign the contract for the funeral home for next meeting. Yep. That's what I want to do. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, we got Adam here. Uh, morning, Adam. Adam. Morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. How are you? Wonderful. Tuesday. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, things going on today. Um, up on 160th, they've got a lot of dirt moved. They kind of got the rough grading done. Now they're running through and kind of doing uh 
get the top all, all, all bladed into shape. Um, but I think maybe, maybe late, late Wednesday or Thursday, the grading about done. And hopefully things work out. Maybe Friday they'll have their, their cement in and, and do the base, base part of it. If that works out, um, be spreading some rock next week and kind of growl up. Hopefully, by the end of next week, it's kind of what they are looking at. So, when was their uh, penalty date started? Well, they started a little bit earlier. So, they, I don't know, they've got like 20 some working days on the project. So, left? No. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll have to look it up, Brad. I, I, I don't remember. I mean, they're. I know they was getting close. And then, not those guys. Uh, up on up on the 160th. We're, we're talking about up, up at Coo -coo -coo. That's what you're talking about. Grandview, yeah. Yeah, the Grandview bypass. Yeah, yeah they, oh. they're they doing fine. I mean, yeah. they're going to finish. I mean, all the way up on the bridge. Oh, uh, well, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute here. Okay. So, and anyway, uh, good progress up there. Um, and they in, in, intend to get it done, so that's good. Um, up on W sixty six up there, uh, there on on that bridge. The uh, actually crew came back yesterday, so they're stripping forms. They got all those concrete forms that they used to build build the bridge so far. So they're stripping them. Uh, just talking with Mike, it'll probably be Wednesday or Thursday before we get that done. And they intend to stay here throughout the rest of the project, is what we've been told. Um, they are down to like 12, 12 days. So um, it's $1,000 a day. So I, I don't think they're going to get it done for me. So I've had, I've, uh, I, I love Bridge and Clover. So I've kind of told my, my thinking is it's a four hundred and ten thousand dollar bridge. They did four hundred fifty on it. You have twenty days worth of penalties. That's twenty thousand dollars. You're still ahead. So I, I I think that's kind of what we're seeing on, on a lot of these bridges. Is we have too much work and not enough workers from their companies. We were busy through COVID here in Iowa. We 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 stay busy and then you go dump a bunch of extra money on top of it mm -hmm. and then really we haven't seen the federal money come in yet so this problem is going to get worse before it gets better so but and anyway our, our project will be done hopefully in July so um, the neighbors to the north have been fortunate they've been they've been allowed to use kind of the contractors path around and had, haven't had much rain so they've been able to get um on the other side for hay and cattle and all that so it hasn't hasn't been a huge deal I haven't heard a lot of complaints actually because it's not a super super busy road and i think everybody you know hopefully everybody knew that you know that that weight limit went from forty to thirty to twenty to I think it was like seven or eight tons now. So, you know, well, the, yeah, it needed to replace. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, Iowa Ridge and Culverts built bridges for us. Oh yeah. Every other year since I've been around, yeah. and boy's been good to work with. Yeah. It's just yeah. Again, yeah. the labor force again. Well, I mean, they're you know the crew that did did our our deck came from. Uh, down by uh, Centerville, you know they're running around. It's just too much work. To be done. So that's what happens. <laughs> so that going on. Um, uh, work crews. Um, our junction crew is finishing up. Woods Hill Road up up there by Chinkapin. We we you know we we had it, we had it at our operator off a couple of days, so kind of puts puts things in the kibosh there. Um, Waffle crews down there working on o, o Avenue, which is the south end of the Iowa City Road, and heading down to Des Moines County. We kind of started hauling in some dirt on that dirt road. 
last year and got it built up and now we're going to kind of kind of kind of go through and uh finish it up to turn it into a road that could be graveled at some point <clears throat> and it, 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 it'll be high high and dry a dirt road and all that so i'm so not a real long dirt road is it no it's only four mile and yeah. it's you know we've got a, a handful of those deals where there's gravel all the way and then we just don't finish the last quarter mile and you know i'm, I'm kind of like well if we got a little bit of time we can do those kind of things um I, I generally like to do one construction project per year for the guys give them something different than just taking ditches or whatever and so this will be ours uh last year we did some uh, tank cars year before we did some tank you know what i'm saying we, we do a lot of oddball things like this that i think kind of improves the system it doesn't cost a lot of money the guys get to feel like they built something rather than just Picking up trash, you know what I'm saying? So, and that's one that never made sense why it was never finished. So. I know, I know. So, yeah. and if we can do it with a week's worth of labor and labor and all that, that's that's pretty good bang for for me. So, especially if you got it ready. Yeah. Um. Other than that, um, I've been talking to the guys about make sure we're wearing our seat belts and equipment and all that on trucks and 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 motorators and all that we've been going through that i'm sure so other than that i i, I, I don't know a lot else other than it's not raining it's 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 dusty out there um, any questions for me no okay um oh i, I did i was going to bring it to you to you guys here uh i pre presented some options on the x61 trail uh I've got some cool stuff from some hot contractors and all that and basically you know, option repair one would be to go in and, and 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 do some cracks sealing on the asphalt we typically do that on on asphalt pavements you you, you pave it and then a couple years later you start getting cracks so you go in and you Low amount you put the, an asphaltic um, material in in there and, 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 and it does and it, and, it, and, it, and it seals up the joints, which keeps water from getting in there. Um, to do the from ninety nine all the way to the north end, about sixteen thousand bucks for to be able to do that. Um, there's a there's there's a lot of cracks that could develop from from track well, from from trucks basically you're driving on it. There's some down the middle of the thing, and then there's some that are tra transverse as well. Um, so that, you know, kind of option one, option two would be to go to put it like a, oh, kind of a thin, thin a seal coat on top of it that would, you know, penetrate down into the asphalt and make it look black again, kind of re rejuvenate it. And that's sixty some thousand dollars to do the entire length. Other, uh, you know, other things could be done is going in, uh, finding some of the bad areas and replacing them with asphalt or concrete. Um, and then, you know, the, the the other option at some point, wait 10 or 15 years and go in and replace a whole other thing. Uh, my recommendation to the Trails Council would be to go in and do the crack ceiling now, sometime in the next year or two. Kind of get some of those bad spots and have them replaced with concrete. A lot of that is at G56. So you got the trucks and then make a wide turn. And, you know, in hindsight, that those trail sections probably should have been concrete. concrete. Um, I talked to Katie and, and, and her, her the question was, well, can, can we put rumble strips on, on some of them? And I said, that probably would have been a good thing at the time. You know to kind of keep i mean you go you know, up there by by uh, cooks and, and all that up there they they cut through that every time every time they do they're going 65 miles per hour <laughs> and they cut the corner all the time so um i told there's that's something we could look at in the future if if and when we ever get around to doing some of that work on on our roads we could we can we can do that so um so i don't know 
what do, what do you guys think? I, you, so you, usually on, on these things, I just do them, right? I mean, you know, um, every year I do, I, whatever, our, our department, you know, we do about a hundred grand worth of cracks to the ceiling on, 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 on roads, right? I'd like to see your grant opportunities for that. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know if you're we talking DOT grants or you're talking some of the local grants that they have. Local mm -hmm. and maybe do agreements. planning and trails and trails. And, but I don't think it should be coming out of the uh, taxpayers. I think it ought to be out of the other type of grant opportunities. Um, and and this is a good learning thing. We got to know that when we put something in, there's got to be a maintenance yeah. plan to it, and yeah. it cost taxpayers money every time we do something like this. So we got to be yeah. smarter on it. Now, I, I I I would comment, you know, that roads does get some benefit from the trail because obviously you've got these trucks that are, you know, you 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 live down there on the K road and you see what happens with the trucks trucks uh, cutting corners and all that. I mean, it it does erode away the shoulder but we had a thing called gravel on there before and that's what they used to cut the corners mm -hmm. now the pavement we we probably should have put a little bit more thought into it like some of the areas put concrete mm -hmm. where the asphalt's not going to hold up uh, i i think when we built the road we should have built it yeah. maybe like 14 foot lanes and striped it yeah. so you so you get it there too you know and then then had some rumble strips on the inside to for, for you know, yeah. what's the current know. count on that road on X sixty one? I know what. Well, because it's became more and more a forum. G forty four X north of Mustine County is like six sixteen seventeen hundred yeah. down. Sorry, it's probably eight hundred a thousand. I mean, it is a busy yeah. busy route, and a, a a lot of it is ag traffic. You know, Oakville up to yeah up to GBC. Well, it's a heck of a shortcut. For coming from yeah. down south, and I mean it's kind kind of like uh, the K road, you know. Yeah. It's a a windy road. road that gets a lot of tr truck traffic, you know, a lot of work up that way, and it just is what it is. So yeah. yeah. And then with some of the embargo, I noticed there's tankers coming up and going 56 up to the 61 now that that used to go through Grandview now. There, so mm -hmm. it's bypassing Grandview, but, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's also a emergency route for 61 closure and. Uh, Maybe the, the other thing when we built G fifty six, we should have widened out those rear radiuses. Yeah. Those those things get chewed up really bad too. Mm -hmm. So, and you've had went back in and paved some of the corners. And we 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 we've done a little bit. I I I wouldn't mind uh, getting our crews out there and doing some of those too because I mean they get eaten up. Oh bad. yeah, there's no traffic on that. You know, it's the same thing down at ninety nine and the Cairo they. They cut that a lot too. So it should have been bigger radius. Is yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some of it is probably not built right. Other ones, you put a 100 foot radius, they're going to cut it too. Yeah. I mean, that's just the way it is. So you know, I guess. Um, well, when Adam talked about it a week ago, I heard something about the Trails Council meeting mm -hmm. later last week. So I had Adam. Prepare this for mm -hmm. something for him to chew over. Yeah, <laughs> that was last night. Or was it for last night? Or whatever. Yeah. yeah, but not to mention. Yeah, is there? Yeah, and I, I think Katie should probably fill you in on what was discussed. But uh, I, it's not the trails that's causing the problem; it's the traffic. And to me, this is not a trails issue. It's a road issue. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of. Well, the traffic is what's causing the problem. Maybe the the trail should have been off the road instead of next to the road. Absolutely. Because that was our shoulder to start with, and it was a cheaper way of doing it. So that's why I'm saying kind of, because it was put in a place where it was part of our roadway to go with. So it's not they're intentionally driving on it. It was part of the roadway before if they overlapped by turning corners, longer trailers, it's going to transfer on it. Now the combines have the wider tracks going down to stay in their lane. They're going to use it. I mean, it's just like they used their gravel and they currently use their gravel. But it's placement. It might have been a better place to put it. 
Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but I walked it and yeah. it sucks. Yeah, and there's too much traffic that close to the road. I, I agree. Uh, I, I walk Highway 61 and it's like eight or 10 feet. Yeah, and still too close. It's, it's still, <laughs> sometimes I still get off on it. Yes, you know, yeah, and it's four lane. The cars can get over, then some of them do, but others don't. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's a terrible idea to put a trail yeah. next to the That's 1,700 cars a day road. I, I, I think if you know, if you could have gone back in time, the better trail would have been from on G62 from Waffle to Lake because there's just not the heavy truck traffic. I mean, it's it's windy enough that it would. There's just not a lot of truck traffic out there, and you go out there and you see people from Waffle ride their bikes out to the lake and turn around and come back. And mm -hmm. but it, it, you know, we can all say we should have done it this way or this way, but, but, but we got it. But it's there now, and, and it does need to be maintained. I, I think it is an asset, but what I'm just asking for guidance here. Mm -hmm. Well, well. Put it out there, we'll see what sticks. Okay. Sounds good to me. Okay. So any, anything else going on? Um, have have had a few complaints up there in the district three from people complaining about us. We're pulling shoulders on on, on gravel roads, you know, when we do it, we kind of create a wind wind row in the middle and then we take the wind row to the outside and it sits there for a couple of weeks and lets that grass die off and then we spread it back out. And some people have been complaining, well, the, the roads are, are rough when that process going on. And I think the operator up there before hadn't really been doing that as much. So I, they're just, I tell them this is common in every other district and you're just kind of, there's a process. A, a, a process in the end of the day, the roads are 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 better, but you have to go through it. I mean, it's it's kind of a construction doing off and on. So other than that, I don't know. Um, no like wind yeah, road on when when wind row on a gravel road is not anything you do though. So I've been lucky that we don't get a usually when we Pull a shoulder, it rains three inches, and it turns into half mud road. Well, you, so when I was first here, we we did a lot of that, and our ten hour days like began in March, and we would do that, and we get out there in like April fifteenth, and then we we get a, we get caught with our pants down, and we would uh, have that. So that's why our our ten hour days don't start till May because yeah. hopefully we're all done with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was one Easter that had a lot of complaints. Uh, I re I remember my right first. No, it was out. Uh, the West road was a bad one. Too. Remember, was it well eighteen and nineteen because it, it rained a lot in nineteen with the uh, with the flood and all that. So figured uh, that wasn't quite working out right. So all right, Mark. Anything else for me? Nope. I think we picked on you now. My thank you. Thanks, the bills. The bills. Yes, I think they're good. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, Katie, I see it's just as good as 915. I made it. <laughs> um, okay, we've been busy. So um, probably the biggest news right now is that Eden Park Playground is done. And so um, all that has been finished. I posted a bunch of pictures and such on Facebook, and it was huge. It's had, when I looked this morning, 34,609 impressions, reached 31,691 people, an engagement of 8,545. It was shared 221 times and had 202 comments. And so... Um, I thought that was kind of big. And then I know a lot of people went out and tried it out that next weekend um, and either texted me or shared information or told me about playing on it. And so um, it's nice to have that done. And um, it's really neat to see how excited people in the community are about it. And I mean, there were people from Wapolo and Junction and whatever that went out there to try it out. So that was fun. Um, we're still waiting on 
the water stuff to get done. Uh, Hackett was there last week on Friday and ran power yeah. into the pump house. The pump house is there and up and everything. And we're waiting on Brockhouse to get there and make sure everything's the go on that. And so, and then the water bottle filling station hasn't arrived yet. So I need to check and see because that was, I mean, I figured it would have been here a long time ago. So um, I'm it's sure. It's when you ordered it. What? <laughs> they said it was in stock when you ordered it. Yeah. And then like <laughs> I called two weeks later, they're like, well, it's going to be four weeks. And then I don't even remember when that was, but it's definitely been four <laughs> weeks. <laughs> so, before me last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's been more than a month. So yeah. hopefully that'll be showing up at any time. Um, I'm getting ready to start working on the annual report here before too much longer, so um, that I can get that done in a timely amount. Um, the trails council met last night. We had a pretty small group there. It was me and Randy and Joellen and um, Kathy Vance was all that made it last night. So our next meeting we're gonna have in the middle of the day, 10 o'clock. What day did we say? July 20th? Yeah. July 20th. It's uh, um at 10 and 10 o'clock in the day. So if we're getting people, we'll probably still do some in the evenings, but if uh it's a lot more convenient to do it during the day if we're not getting people from the public there um to come the um uh, and we really want to talk to Adam at our next one. And so in order to get him there, we got to do it during the day. So that's kind of our plan. Um, the Mississippi River Parkway Commission, um, that's a committee that I serve on. And so I'll be gone on Friday for a meeting for that. But we're working on a new initiative, What Did Pike See? And so we're hoping to bring that to all 10 counties that lie along the Mississippi River in Iowa. And um, for visitors that are traveling the Great River Road to see. And so we have a ton of people that visit the Great River Road and stop at the Toolboro Museum from all over. I do have um, got off the press by a couple months new Great River Road maps. And so I don't know if you guys have any use for them. I think there's a spot in the courthouse to put yeah. stuff like that. And then I'm going to drop a few off at like the Fish and Wildlife Service. And we've already got some at Toolboro. So if anybody wants one, you can take one. I'm like that four or five or five okay. other place. I have like a couple Thank cases you. of them, so just one. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. You want one clean it? All right. Anybody else? Yep. No? Yes, no. Um, so anyways, uh that's something that the kind of parkway commission does in the, the entire group. Of course, that's our Iowa Mississippi River Parkway Commission is part of the 10 state parkway commission that it goes all the way up and down the Mississippi River. And so um, it's a, a big initiative from all the states to encourage travel. And of course, that tool throw, we usually have people from like 30 some states, four or five different countries, um, and then of course around here locally also. Um, let's see. Um, the naturalists have been uh, really busy with camps and summer rec and stuff. And so we have a lot of uh, things going on this summer. All of our nature camps filled up super fast this year. And so they're all full. And we even ended up taking some extra kids and changed our plan a little bit to accommodate more kids. So that's a good, good problem to have. Summer recs are happening in all the cities. We added Fredonia this year. So they did two days of summer rec so that was uh that was really fun i think they're wanting to do maybe more next year and we're hoping to invite some of the other cities that haven't been doing it like oakville and let's and columbus city and anybody else that might want to we've offered it to them multiple times over the years but um possibility if they want to do it uh, maintenance staff is working on opening Flaming Prairie. They spent all day there yesterday. It's going to take at least another day or so to get that all opened up, but the river's dropped enough that it's drying out in there. And so if you're getting questions about Flaming Prairie, because I know we are, it should be open by this weekend. So they uh, got all the grass knocked down yesterday and are going through and wind rowing <laughs> all the grass off of the, the campground and stuff because it's so tall. Our next board meeting is going to be at Fleming Prairie, um, July 10th. So we're not doing the third because of the holidays and stuff. So it'll be July 10th at Flaming Prairie. 
And then I'm hoping to have our August meeting out at Eden Park and incorporating a ribbon cutting ceremony and inviting um, a bunch of people to that, maybe having some other activities. So the August meeting might be a big one at Eden Park as long as the board agrees to that. Um, questions for me? I dropped any boards off yesterday. I saw that. They said they didn't think together. I was over talking to them. They said it was going to go down and start cutting all the weeds down there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a big job. So, they're a big job. I don't have any questions. Okay. Uh, a little more for me. <laughs> Anything I forgot to say, Brad, from our meetings? I don't no, know. it was just on a uh, trails council. We were talking about uh, last night, they mentioned about the uh, trail along the road that we're having a problem with, and Adam sent that a price on that. What's, what's some of your thoughts on that? Um, the trails council discussed it last night. We discussed a couple of different things, and um, I think that in general, the group sort of had the consensus that. Correct me if I'm wrong, Randy, you were there. Um, the, that trail is sort of property of secondary roads. And so we're okay with helping with it. I don't think the group felt like they had like the funds to like just pay for it um, because there's a lot of other projects. Uh, we discussed ideas and we've got to bring this to the conservation board, but the trails council would like to submit a reef or not reef, a um, community foundation grant to hire someone to clear the section of the Hoover Nature Trail over there, um, kind of by Sean Albers between 115th and 125th or Street or something like that. And so um, I think that in terms of spending money, like they felt like that was a project that um, was would be a good project. And then at least we could see what would need to be done along Long Creek if we wanted to make that an open trail that people could walk, ride, cross, you know, however. Um, and so, so to answer your question, I think the group is interested in supporting the project on X61, um, but maybe not fully funding it. Is there we other, don't have a source of money, you know, so. Is there other grants that we could probably write to, to, to maintain that? Is there anything out there? You I think we could apply for a community foundation grant. There aren't a ton of grants for. And that's not a large grant to get the community foundation. No. Usually it's up to 5,000 at that. At yeah. That, so. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know if there's anything out there that you know that we can try to get. I drove like half of it yesterday and took pictures. And honestly, like from I ride my bike quite a bit from a bike riding perspective, the gravel on the trail is probably more dangerous than the cracks yeah. right now. And I have a mountain bike, so I ride I can ride on gravel, but I feel like hitting the gravel off of it would be huge. And we could probably free up one of our staff people to use secondary roads sweep or whatever if we needed to do that to get the gravel off of it but especially everywhere there's a driveway um especially people who are good at putting new rock on their driveway there's a lot of rock coming across there i mean i worry about that with the motorcycle because there's a lot of motorcycles that drive that and mm -hmm. I, I worry about that quite a bit i mentioned that you know, last week and if they yeah. did clean off 56 got that cleaned off but. yeah the worst part really of that trail um and i only drove from 99 to g56 um, but right there, right by G56, it's like everybody must turn on a G56, go off the road first yeah, to, make, all up here. Yeah, to make the corner. And so there's so much truck anymore. So well, and even while I was just driving that, that road is curvy enough yeah. that I watched it them. I crossed the center line twice and then go off onto the shoulder to make the curves. Like I was watching him in front of come in front of me and behind because I was pulled off to the side with my flashers taking pictures, and I thought. I don't know if that road is wide enough for semis to make those curves at their whatever they're going 55 miles an hour or whatever. It's uh, it seems like they're filling the entire lane from line to line. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's and then my thought to Adam was, what if we put a rumble strip on there? Because I know what you saying. rumble strips kind of help you go, oh. I'm going off the road, you know, like I think when it's just a total, like people are using that as a paved shoulder instead of a trail. And so, you know, some of the farm implement equipment, and there were two huge farm implements at the same time, you know, I was out there, there must have been probably five or six semis past me and two farm implements. They didn't pass me, but they were going down the road. And so there's definitely a lot of people driving on that as part of their normal 
driving routine. So I don't know that filling the cracks for $20,000 is going to solve the problem. It's just a band-aid that I don't know what we can do to help that. And we definitely don't have $3.3 .3 million to pave it. And I don't think $3.3 .3 million to pave it because $3.3 .3 million is what put the asphalt there. And that was probably 15 years ago. So it'll be expensive. The trail was over a million dollar project, though. The shoulder. I think it was three million, wasn't it? One point six or something. That was one of the. We had to have two hundred thousand dollars to do the match. Okay. Okay, so it was only a million. Oh my. I'd have to look back and remember. Yeah. Good. Yeah, well, and of course, we didn't have scenic byways money for a year. Scenic byways money is available now, and that was another discussion last night that maybe in key places, we should try to add a six-foot wide trail on the southbound lane, for example, on the Port Loiza, the hill next to Port Loiza that goes down there, because anybody riding their bike and trying to come up that hill, there's a huge differential in speed of a bike trying to make it up that hill and a vehicle trying to make it up that hill. Um, that there might be a few key places where it would be really handy out of the trail on the opposite side, but then you're adding another thing to maintain. Mm -hmm. so. Well, when, I'm, when it was built years ago, I heard from the average taxpayer that doesn't ride a bike that, well, now we're going to have to maintain the dumb thing forever. Well, I'd like to find a way partially or something to maintain, to help maintain it. Because there's people that don't ride a bike, that farm, pay taxes. They're, they're using it. <laughs> they're using well, they, it. there was two of them but, using it the day I, I mean, <laughs> not every farmer lives in the right. northeast part of the county. Yeah. So, so I'm just trying to. The trials council should pay for it. But yeah, I'm going to have people come up to me and say, yeah. well, I told you so. Well, I'm going to say, well, maybe we could get something worked out. That's just all I'm trying. Yeah. One thing to remember with the Trails Council is we don't own anything. The Trails right. Council is just a group of volunteers in the community that's trying to provide trails for the public to use. And so any trails that are worked on, you know, Larry Roll was a huge part of that. He wrote the grants and right. did the work on that through secondary roads. And so, you know, any trails that we work on are either on secondary roads, on county conservation ground, or within city limits in the different cities because the Trails Council isn't even 501c3. We don't own right. anything. We're just uh, But you, you see the scenic support. highways grants. Th that's all on the okay. Yeah. That's, that's, I'm just trying to open up. So, okay. It, it isn't something that needs done right now, but then in a few years, it's going to need done. I'm just, yeah. Well, I think having yeah, things that does need done right away. Well, I it will deteriorate faster if we don't do something. Right. That's what he's trying to do. Yeah. Water will get in, cracks will freeze and all. Another winter will probably be devastating to a lot of that area. So, yeah, I think he's going to get a cost on what it would take to put rumble strips in the middle. And then probably in the future, we'll try to not be right on the shoulder, but be on the back slope instead so that you know the deterioration will be a lot slower because that trail is not very old no <laughs> it's such a building a road today today with the same theory you're putting it right next to the road and that's the bypass around grandview there was a there was a four foot section that he added for a walking path alongside that road. I'm telling you, you need to kibosh it yeah. and, and either move it to the back slope or make the road that way. I don't care if the road's wider. Yeah. I don't care. But to put it next to the road isn't gonna isn't gonna help the situation yeah. without separation. Right. Yeah. I, I agree. But it's always the path that we take is the the least expensive, and that's the way that the trail is over Columbus Junction, just put in last year, two years ago. It's long side of the road. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the same thing. Yeah. And then it ends and right it, at the cemetery. We don't have quite as much traffic as 1,600 cars a day yeah. over by the lake as on that road. But once again, right next to the road isn't an no. ideal place to walk or yeah. somebody gets hit, and it's not. 
Yeah, they're they're going to lose. They're just been really lucky. We haven't had somebody hurt. Yeah. yeah. But the thing we know too is people are riding their bikes on it anyway. So whether we have that extra shoulder to get off on or not, right. they're still using it for that yeah. purpose. So what's so. The, the worst evil? They're riding on the road itself or right off the side of it. And just, I don't know. We just, I don't know. I don't know the answer, but mm -hmm. I know to do that trail and probably build another one down in a ditch area it would have been astronomical. Probably would have been your three million if it was a million. Uh, last I seen a trail was getting to be a million dollars a mile, like a road was 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and I think the Trails Council did talk about maybe writing a grant to provide some money, you know, whatever we can get. But we'd also like to get a stencil and like paint some little like bicycles. bicycles on there so that people do realize that it's not just a shoulder, that it is a bike lane so that maybe people are watching for bikes more. And, and that's a good idea, really, yeah. to, to signify what it actually is for. Mm -hmm. And that might be. Down on the island, we kind of wanted to do that either with kind of the like share the road um, because we don't have a, a side area there. And so you are just riding right on the road to connect to the Muscatine County yeah. trail. And so that way it would just make people a little bit more aware that there might be someone with a bike. Yeah. Well, yeah, I just bought a wheelchair stencil and it wasn't, I think it was 35 bucks for a bicycle one. No, it wouldn't be much, no. Yeah. Yeah, and then the pay for it. And yeah. so if we wrote a grant, you'd get a little bit of supply to be reused, Maybe and then the rest something. of the money would go toward to kind of say, help with the craft. We have to live with what we got and mm -hmm. just make it the best. So and Adam made it sound like he has these people come every year to do that on different roadways. Yeah. So we could, if we don't have 20,000 this year to do the entire thing. We could do focus on the first ones yeah. and then come back in another five or 10 years and focus on the next worst ones. But we have to maintain the investment. I mean, we got money into it. We got 200,000, like Chris is saying, that's what mm -hmm. we got to maintain it somehow. Yeah. Just like every other building and sidewalk that we have. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's our job. Yes. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm yes, okay, that's yes. the support of it. Uh, we don't yeah. have much money we can get yet. Yep. Sounds right. Good. I'm just. Yeah. Getting the football process going. Yeah. And I'll say something next. I think it's Thursday, Southeastern Regional. See if what's out there for that. But, uh, might be something. Okay. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your update. Okay, Bobby. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Yeah, I'll take a bunch of these in there too. Thank you. Hello. Hi, Bobby. We're ready. For Hello, all of you. Are you ready for me? Sure. Okay. Um, I guess I'll give you a quick update. I don't know if I'm, am I scheduled every two months or three months? How often would you like me to do the updates? Well, it says your quarterly update. I think that would, so everybody okay. think quarterly. It was supposed to be quarterly, but yeah, I think we're having you every month still. Well, she was here earlier because of the. Yeah, for the other 2080. 2080. I'll try to get on schedule. So I will, I'll give you a quick update because a lot of things have been happening. Um, so this this past month with, uh, well, now the new region, the Mental Health Agency of Southeast Iowa, um, that is our new brand. And we're working on establishing a logo so that we can start getting the word out so people know who we are. Um, and also once we get that branding done, um, the mobile crisis response provider, which is Elevate, will be um, developing a brochure and um, getting that out in the community so that we can start um, letting people know that that new service is available. Um, they're working on hiring right now. So um, I think as of last week, they had over 20 employees hired. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to getting that fully staffed so that they can um, begin implementing that program in our region. You know, hopefully we're looking at timelines of August, September sometime. So they're all going through training at this point in time. Some things that we finished up were, um, we finished up contracting. Um, we had lots of contracts go through the last two months. So I think we've got most of them completed. There may be one or two out there that we will still have to complete in July um, for some 
one is a new service with a new provider, um, just making sure we have all their budgets and everything so that we can get an appropriate contract in place. We finished up the 2080 agreement, so that was completed. All, all 13 counties had submitted their resolutions, so that has been submitted to the state of Iowa. So that will get re recorded. And once that's recorded, we will send copies out to all of the auditors in the counties. So that's to come. We also um, established the insurance through ICAP. Um, so we have that completed um, during the transition. Obviously, we'll need to have both regions covered um, until we transition into the new region. We also uh, established and approved the fiscal agent agreement with Des Moines County. So that was signed by our regional governing board and um, that will be signed by Des Moines County. And then they will be our fiscal agent for the mental health agency of uh, Southeast Iowa starting July 1st. Um, we finished up the fiscal year 24 combined annual service and budget plan. Uh, because we were two separate regions, we each had our own annual service and budget plan. So we had to combine them for the state and um, have reviewed that with them. Um, I believe they're satisfied with that. So that's been submitted now. That was approved by all of our advisory boards, adult and children, as well as the governing board. And the last thing, which is on our agenda today, um, are the MOUs for each county to sign. The governing board did approve those for each county. And what those are is it's an agreement between the county and the region um, as we have county employees. So it's an agreement that we'll, we will reimburse the counties for the cost of the administration. Uh, fees as well as rent that we pay. Um, and some of those may have some nuances. Um, if there are any other office expenses that cannot be paid directly to the um, agency, uh, but there's very, very few of those, if any at all anymore. But so the one for Louisa County will cover Cindy's salary. Um, that'll be paid through fund six. Um, and we do ensure that there is money in that fund. Um, prior to payment of those uh, costs for her. She's our administrative assistant and that has already been completed. And we also have paid rent to all of the counties as well. So that should be coming to Louisa in the next couple of weeks. So there's a lot still happening, obviously as we transition into the new region. Um, a lot of things internally that we're still working on as far as, you know, we have our, our own separate data system. So we're, you know, working on those details like establishing new entity in there, um, transferring clients, um, just accessibility and having the ability to assign duties appropriately to all of the staff, um, as well as being able to pay bills appropriately through that system. So we're still working through uh, CSN to get that completed. And we'll be meeting with the management team on Friday to kind of go over some of the things that may need to be adjusted as far as policy and procedure. But all of the services, I think I've stated before, have remained the same for all of the, both of the regions as well as Monroe County. And those were continued on through the next fiscal year. So we will be working on combining our management plans, which is our policy and procedure um, guideline that we utilize. And we have to get that approved, not only through our uh, advisory boards, but it has to go through our governing boards, has to go through the MHDD commission approved by um, HHS. So it's quite a process, but we are gonna be working on that. And hopefully we'll have that done by, um, you know, the end of this calendar year. Did I hit it all, Chris? Sounds like, yeah. Yeah, you did good. Okay. Do you have any questions about the new region or no. any of the, okay. No, we're good. Okay. 
I kind of brought up the next agenda item, didn't I? So you guys also have that memorandum of understanding in front of you? Yeah, I do, but I'll pass it around as we Wow. And so you'll see on there that uh, our governing board did sign off on that. And what's included on uh, there is you'll see Cindy's 40% of her salary is paid through the region. Right. As well as on the back page for occupancy, that's the rent that is paid at $10 per square foot to the county. So we're just asking it, that you review that and consider approval so that we could submit that as well with our 180 documents. Sounds good to me. It's actually not a part of the 280 document, but it's an attachment. Do it, yes, Has anything changed since the last time we signed it? Just the percentage, wasn't it? The, the percentage has changed, and Cindy's uh, obviously her yearly raise is included in that. Gotcha. Two years ago, Cindy was 50 50, right? 40. It's, he was 60 40. Okay, I went the other way. All right. All right. I'll make the motion to uh, sign the MOU, Mental Health Agency of Southeast Iowa, for the county employee occupancy equipment. And I'll second that. <clears throat> okay, got a motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 That means you, I think. What? Yeah, he's already signed it. I already signed it. Yeah. I'll put it here. We're good. I think that. Concludes what we had to do, right? Yes, that's all we needed to have completed. Um, if you want, you can just scan that in and send that back to me. Cindy can do that for you. If you need like. the original? I can bring it Friday. Sure, you can bring the original. We can just give it right to Ryan. Sounds great. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank well, you. Look forward to your next update. Three months. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Okay, that. Hey, I handed. Did I get the uh, ambulance report handed out? Yeah, I, and you're looking at it. Yeah. We need to review it. Oh, we need Cindy's yep, updates. Sorry, Cindy. You're fine. <laughs> um, can we start? So, okay. general assistance. Um, I'll give you our number for May. We had 27 households and 72 individuals for the food pantry here in Wapalo. For foot traffic, we had 51 phone and eight foot. Uh, the next mobile food pantry will take place on Wednesday, the June 28th. And um, <laughs> for the Snyder Hall and Ball contract, we didn't get that back yet. I did con um Call them and talk to them a couple times. Eric is on vacation this week, and so I think that might be the holdup, but we'll get that back and get that put into place. Uh, we have shredding. We have shred it coming. They're going to bring some totes, and so we're going to be able to get rid of um, a much of, yeah, just a few. <laughs> There's like 12 filing cabinets in the storage unit, their um, room, and so we're going to go ahead and be able to shred lots and lots of stuff. So excited about that. and. Shredda is holding us up because they had some truck issues. And so hopefully they'll get something to us this week. I'm hoping for those totes to come, but um, he doesn't, he didn't have a time frame because of the truck issues that they're having. So we need to hear from them. How many you be able to empty? You're going to get that pretty much most of the file cabinets that's been in that room. Yep. And Tracy plans on, uh, what we've already talked to some of the other departments and they're ready for empty filing cabinets. And so we have, most of those going to homes already. And so Excellent. I think it'll be, I don't know about cleaned out in there, but it'll look way different. So mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I did attend the Food Bank of Iowa Annual Partner Agency Conference this last month and also the General Assistance Annual Retreat. And so it was really good to get together with partners in different counties and learn some more about that. Um, 
the, let's see. I think that's pretty much everything I am going on vacations for the office will be closed uh, June 30th through July 11th, which is the longest I've ever taken. Um, so hopefully everything goes good. I'm going on a cruise, so I won't have reception as far as you, you uh, usually I your phone and stuff. Yeah, I'm not going to. <laughs> usually I, I'm constantly in touch with the office, and so it's not a problem. So from the 4th through the 11th, I'll be completely out of touch. Mm -hmm. but, um, it would be a weird feeling to not be able to know what's going on at the office, but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. Get away. Any questions? Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Hey, we got the wise ambulance and flames. What? I reviewed the ambulance. I have. I think that perhaps maybe we need to get those entities in here and have a long discussion on their balance sheets and unless you want to do it one on one, that might be the best. The numbers just look weird. Yep, I agree. Yeah, when they hide Bailey, you yeah, have that one out there. Yep. Yes. I'll make a motion. It's just our usual update. Did they have a price increase? Um, I don't. Yes, there was a little one when we did budget. Yeah, when we did budget. But there hasn't been anything on this. No. Okay. And they are in the process. I'm working with them um, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. They're doing the work part of their audit. Uh, Brad, did you make a motion? I will. Okay. I'll make a motion to on this I Bailey contract. It's like, of uh, understanding for the 2023 audit with IJ County. And we've, we've used these people for like a long time. Yeah. yeah. 15 years. I'll um, second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All right. What's the total? Just so I have the number in my head. That way, next year or two, when you guys are gone, I. They. Uh, and that's why I wanted to check, make sure it was a budget and mom that we had set up for me. I can double check that for you. Looking for a number. I don't see a number. I just want to make sure it stays within in line. I, yeah, I can. And I, I don't know those that. numbers, so I'm trying to keep them in that Rolodex of money. It will not exceed 48500 Okay. That's a year, right? Yes. Okay. We got to have him look at your Olympic expense. <clears throat> I don't see any place for a supervisor to sign it. Um, they haven't even signed it. Um, electronically and then when I look at the other one Chris just signs yeah okay. did you see the John some of the questions I had on that on that ambulance also too I, I got it um I'm looking up the morning sun one that we got um in my little pack here that we got a month or so ago. And um, I'd like to get a copy of this one. And then maybe I'll call those entities together and we'll just have a little chat. I mean, I'm not going to tell them how to run their business, but if the county's supplying a subsidy, then I think we have a little bit of 
responsibility yeah. on an understanding where well, why we didn't is. stay in the budget amount right where I mean, they're they're it's... real weird and then the utilities was budgeted for fifteen thousand. I've only spent fifty eight. You think we've had a history that and just stuff uh, like. Yeah, I'm a little surprised you budget fifteen thousand dollars for utilities. I mean, you just divide that out to a number. It's over a thousand dollars a month for water yeah. and lights and heat. Yeah. And, and when I, you're currently at uh, what eighty three percent of your budget's over with at that time, a ninety six or ninety one point six percent. Okay. Technically, and they still are ten thousand. On your budget, but there's some things there was ten thousand. Yeah, I know they're 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 like way way off. Yeah, and they threw in some capital outlay, which is fine, but they didn't budget anything for oh. it. So now that throws their oh, entire right. budget off by fifty grand. I mean, just on that one item, one one item. Yeah. So then when I hear that they're you know they're in the red, fifty grand. Well. Yeah, no, kind of. Mm. Mm. I don't know. It's just, yeah, kind of makes your head hurt. That's but, not a proper budget. That's not a that. That's not how budgets work. <clears throat> not 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 from where I'm from. Well, you can't exceed. You're supposed to stay in budget work. As much as possible, unless there's emergencies or but items. We all know how that works. But you, items you, of, yeah, you just budget. don't throw a number out there in the air there has to be and rationale, rationale behind it Which, well that one's owned by a city not privately we need to and there's a history well they got lease rent and they've exceeded their budget on rent by almost five grand and well you a, should know what your rent should be yeah right that's where i kind of question what's good yeah, I, I don't know i don't understand it but I'll get the answers. Yeah. I'll, you. I'll ask the questions. They may not like them, but I know I'll I probably ask them. The circle of the main sheet, but it's just it's okay. It's our sheets. So questions that need to be asked. Uh, the only other thing on claims are we on claims still? Yeah, we're still um, under the assessor. There's one, two, three, four, four people. On the conference board that got paid, that was the uh, hearings they had. Okay, the, as I say, I was on the conference board. board for a long time. You never got a picture? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what is going on here? No, they had the conference hearings, and then they had people. That, okay, all right, and, and it wasn't a lot. It was just it just kind of popped yeah, out mileage and time. Yeah, okay. The, I mean, we're talking like ten dollars and nineteen. That's the special board that met the. Did not get any okay. Fair buddy enough. to recommend those. Like I said, I've been on there for over a decade, and I won my ten dollars if I was no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only other one was um there was some tires for uh one of the board of health cars. Mm -hmm. cool. and, and it just lumped it together the tires and the balance and everything and i i looked it over it's it's fine i would be nice to have their so their bills kind of itemized itemized a little better but it, it's it wasn't a huge deal Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the claims as submitted and just so that's out there and you guys can do I'll this. second that, please. Okay, you got a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, here's the rest of the claims you want to finish on. That pretty much concludes our agenda. Yeah, I think they're right. And you guys did 16. You don't know, you just reviewed that. Yeah, just review. I'll make a motion. No other businesses brought forward. Second. 
Okay, got a motion second. All in favor, aye. aye. We are adjourned. Can I make a copy of this? Yeah, sure.